Oh, what a serious intro for JP Sebastian as we're about to talk movies on your Feel Good Breakfast show. Can I just say I missed that hard rock intro for uh, you? Uh, it was kind of a, a very saddening to see Zoe like prepared to air guitar and then uh, the classical came in and she was okay. very confused for like five I, I, I changed to a cello. <laughs> okay, JP, we are talking Bullet Train. I've been seeing it all over my social media, mm -hmm. the premiere. I've been yes. seeing Brad Pitt. I've been seeing the new guy. You've been seeing Brad Pitt? Oh my goodness, gossip, no, I'm guys. not saying I've been seeing him. I've been seeing him on my social medias. It's a corny dad joke. I'm sorry, continue. <laughs> On your social medias, you mean like your mixits? Um, sorry, being a dad. Instagram. Uh uh, ooh, oh, is that, is that a type of headache called? Let's focus on the movie. Sorry. Uh, bullet Train uh, is a little bit, I'm going to show you a bit from the horse's mouth, have the actors talk about it themselves. Brian Tyree Henry, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and a bit of Brad Pitt, who's probably too famous to be in this little featurette. But they're explaining, I think, the strongest point of this movie, which is just the chemistry between these actors. So let's have a look. Hi. There's a gun on you. It's the quiet car. I don't know if you've ever had to fight someone uh, for your life um, quietly, but it's not. It, um, because uh, it takes place on the quiet car. <laughs> the most distracting part of the fight is Brad's hair. You shot me. I should have people. Twice. Should have done a third. <laughs> Tangerine and Lemon, they're trained assassins. But what makes them funny is that they bicker between each other. Mm. Where's the briefcase? Oh, it's that shit. It was just here. It's an action-packed, entertaining, full-on comedy that's just got twists and turns and surprises with a phenomenal cast. Bioscope. Skit and uh, Oxy. Uh, uh, Oxy, yes, indeed. <laughs> uh, bullet Train, are you into this kind of thing? I do enjoy a movie like this. Yes, I mean, you yeah. were just doing the air guitar, so... Uh, I, I it's it's refreshing. kind of rocking out. Yes, and I love know. that there's a bit of humour to it. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, especially during these times, man, if you can just take the edge off. A bit of funny violence, a bit of the whatever. Let me tell you a bit about violence. the story, though. And the, and the story obviously comes for very little because it's a single conceit type thing. It's just a train, it's a bunch of assassins going at each other's throats, literally. How does it resolve? Uh, but but Brad Pitt is a guy who's in this sort of zen phase where he's like, he's tired of being an assassin. He doesn't want to use guns again. He doesn't want to kill people, wants to resolve things peacefully. He's seen a therapist, etc., etc. Sent on a train by Sandra Bullock, who is his handler, who you only ever hear over the phone until the end of the movie, uh, and is told you've got to secure a suitcase. It's as simple as that. What could go wrong? Problem being what is that you've got... What could go wrong? Or you wouldn't get a two-hour movie if something didn't go wrong, right? So you get uh, Brian Terry Henry and you get Aaron Taylor Johnson and they're transporting the owner of the suitcase who is a kid who has been held hostage for a mafia dude who's from the Yakuza and then the other entanglements of this other mystery person who's trying to sabotage all the, those webs of conspiracies and lies and betrayals and all that kind of stuff. You've got another person in So you've got a bunch of assassins going after each other, including uh, that dude who, uh, yeah, shame. Uh, no, no, I'm not going to spoil anything. Anyway, yeah. look. No I've spoilers. Got very little time to talk about this, but I want to say, it's got a lot of forebears, of course. It's got a lot of other movies that have set a bar. John Wick, mm. you know, has set a certain bar for action. Mission Impossible, everything Tom Cruise touches turns to fireworks, it's set a bar. Kill Bull, mm. Inglorious Bastards, uh, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, etc., etc. So does this movie match that standard? And uh, unfortunately not. The second you start thinking about, remember Snatch, which also had Brad Pitt? Yes. Uh, do you like dags? Like the clip of the editing with that, the tempo, the, the pace. You're calling your movie Bullet Train, it has to be whip smart and whip fast. fast. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, it doesn't stand up to those kind of standards. Zazie Beats is there too. Yay, she's cool. Uh, and I think the strongest point about it is, like I said at the very start, the charm between the two characters, the chemistry. It's got great chemistry between all these great actors, but not the chemicals to go with it. Uh, okay. And the lab is kind of boring too. Uh, that said, though, it's, you know, sort of forgettable uh, action movie, which isn't the worst thing in the world. But it's good entertainment. If you Fun need to, to let your head out for a popcorn movie, I'll give it six popcorns out of there. Ah, J.P. Sebastian, not being too stingy. It's got strong competitors, man. I'd rather... I'm going to rewatch Inglorious Bastards today, just for... Remember those clever feelings? Like, if you're watching a, a detective, like, untangle issues or whatever, it's like three glasses in Inglorious Bastards. People who know what I'm talking about know what I'm talking about. Those clever moments, none of I that missed, going on in the year. Missed it, okay. 
Okay, well, Decent enough, actually. JP Sebastian giving the movie 6 out of 10. It is, of course, available from today. Bullet Train. Do go and check it out. If you do, let us know how many popcorns you would give it. Of course, that's only JP Sebastian's opinion, but we One always dude. love and appreciate it. Thank you.